is your scheduled laugh time. Insert your laughter chip. You get a couple guys together, as soon as they start telling stories, somebody inevitably starts saying that they got a better one. And then they start trying to top the next one, and 45 minutes down the line, nobody's telling the truth at this point. Between the three of us, who has the better prank story? For starters, my family isn't really a prank family, like, but there's one Christmas where my dad played the, this prank on me, and it, it, was, it was brutal. I, I, was, I was mad at first. So Christmas of 2007, 2006, something like that, the, the, the uh, DS was like a new hot topic. The like, you know, oh, the I remember screen, the craze. The, yeah, yeah like, everyone had them. The uh, DS Lite or whatever was the current model or whatever, and I wanted that so bad. I had bought a, a DS game back in October, um, and I had just waited to play this game. I think it was like the Animal Crossing w w Wild World. It was a DS port. You bought the game of, before you had the it, console. It was the second game in the, in the Animal Crossing <laughs> series, which if you don't want to know what Animal Crossing is, it's like The Sims, but with animals. Ugh. And I had to... I, it, it was so fun, though. If, if you played it, you... you I just you, remember you know, hating but... everyone that played it. I'm glad yeah, we're friends now. <laughs> I've never played it, but I still hate it. It's it's so fun. Anyway, <laughs> I was so excited because they had a portable version. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can take this anywhere. Like, that's amazing. So I bought the game in October, read the instruction manual a hundred times. Just every day I would, like, pull it out and be like, my little baby, you know. Like, <laughs> I, was, like, I love this thing. I was so excited. So on the Christmas day, I get downstairs. I'm all pumped because I'm like, I'm getting a DS. You know it's happening. I pestered my parents like every day for the past like you went and months. bought the game. You did I not have a choice. The system. <laughs> so I'm like, this, this has to happen. If my parents truly love me, there's gonna be a DS <laughs> under that tree, and I know they love me. I think <laughs> <laughs> this is the test. We'll see. So I get down there, and um, uh, I guess to preface this, my 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 my, my dad had this running gag. About this DS. Anytime I would I would m mention you know this DS would be like, well, I found this really great Shrek playset, and I was thinking about getting you that. This 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 Shrek playset. It's got Shrek, and it's got Donkey, and it's got the Gingerbread <laughs> Man. I'm like, I don't care about that man. I don't, I don't he was memeing Shrek. Shrek before so Shrek was me. Yeah. He was, yeah, yeah, he totally was, and he just kept every time I mentioned, he'd be like, this this Sh Shrek playset, man. I'm 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 gonna get you that. I'm like, no, you're gonna give me a DS. Like, <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> and when I got down there on Christmas morning, there was a gray or like a, a just cardboard Amazon box. And he had taken his label maker and he wrote Shrek playset and he put it on there. So when I ripped open the wrapping yes. paper and I saw a Shrek playset, my heart sank. Oh, like, you thought that was it. You did. It was like a gun. <laughs> <a gut> yeah. <laughs> and I just looked up. I looked up at my dad with his face like, You've got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was waiting for that moment, though. He was waiting for it. <laughs> that was his I Christmas think, present think, that I think year. I it's the most fun Christmas he's ever had. That, uh, <laughs> he was having a blast. Why do Open parents up. like to do that? We did that to my kids last year. My wife told our kids that, that the only thing that they were going to get was, like, a can of beans. Yeah, And so, like, every Christmas Eve, they get to open one present before the, the next morning. And, and, and like, just to mess with them, like, she had the real present under it, but at the top, it was, it was a can of beans. And there was just so many immediate tears. <laughs> it just, she wasn't trying, she was just trying to joke around, but just immediate Ah, just tears <laughs> across the board. I think it's it's kind of messed up, but it, it's it's what makes it funny is that you know that your kids trust you so much that they'll that they'll take your word for face value. So, wow, like, that's going a little too you, deep. You, but you speaking know. of face value, <laughs> I'm gonna top both of your guys real quick. In college, um, I had this roommate who was allergic to dye forty, or not dye forty, excuse me, blue dye. Legit allergic to blue dye. Could not eat it. Would break out. Weirdest allergy ever. His birthday rolls Kool-Aid man busting the door. Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, he's just, no. he just dies. Oh, no. <laughs> he's just gone. There's blue dye in the air. <laughs> Gas mask. Where's my mask? <laughs> blue dye, blue dye. <laughs> Put those blue cupcakes away. So speaking of blue cupcakes for his birthday, oh, no. I go oh, and get a cake for joking. him. <laughs> On purpose. On purpose. Get a cake. Beautiful chocolate cake. Beautiful chocolate cake. Bring it back. I buy blue ice cream, or not ice cream, excuse me, blue frosting. And I cover the plastic cut top of the cake oh. with blue frosting all the way, sprinkle it around, made it look gorgeous. Got all this other sweet mates in on this prank. 
brought him in, all his friends into this big like, meeting area, started singing happy birthday for him, all super excited. They're all in on the prank. Give him the knife for him to cut into the cake. And he's like, Gu guys, I, I, I can't eat that. <laughs> he goes to cut it and it's like plastic and he just loses his mind. So, you know, as far as pranks go. Yeah, that's awesome. He's probably too, he's like shaking, trying to avoid touching him. Like, <laughs> He's like, this could yeah. be my last time. <laughs> All right, so I can top. I can top that. Okay, I can top that. So when I was in high school, um, they don't do this so much anymore. I mean, they they, they still do like big squirt guns, right? But but like they just kept making them bigger and bigger, and it was like the coolest thing if you had the biggest squirt gun with the big like if it if it shot like a hose, like you were the cool kid. So when I was in high school, <laughs> me and me and like four of my buddies. All had these just massive fire hoses of squirt guns. Okay, they were just giant, and somehow we thought it would be funny. I, honestly, I don't even remember who we did this to. That's just how awful I was. I don't even. I didn't even really know the person very well. But, but we decided, and this is so terrible. <laughs> you know, you know when you have a a grad party and you invite the whole family and all the friends and half the school shows up and there's everybody's having a good time. We thought it would be awesome if we just took our super soaker giant squirt guns and we raided the grad party and we just soaked everybody. So we got we got camoed up. We got all camoed up. We cro like we we made our way through the woods to be able to come through the back. <laughs> Black Ops mission. And then we had a whole plan. Like the house was the house was here and we were gonna send two of us this way. And that way when people saw people coming with squirt guns, they would run and they would run. But oh no. There were gonna be another couple guys over on the other side. And so we, we come and we're oh just hosing everybody and I go around the corner and the mom's going, no. Oh and I'm Hosing all the family, the friends. I don't even know them. Oh my god! I don't even know them. You, you just terrible. <laughs> and then we just left. Just, just true terrorism. Congratulations. Congrats. Congrats. I don't know if Sucker. that's a prank or just mean. <laughs> Take a second to recover from that image yeah, of young I don't Jeff. Know, man. That's, like, that's, that's, young that's, Jeff, that's try to sit with All right, everyone, go, go, go. Knowing how much like stress and effort my mom put into my grad. Oh, I see. I know this now. That <laughs> yeah, right, right. Now right, that I'm right. older, like I understand. <laughs> but young me did not understand. So, so speaking of like special moments, I was in France, and I, th I think I can at least par. I, I think I can try to top the, what you just did. But I've always wanted to moon someone. Oh no! As a, as a younger <laughs> teenager, I just had this weird bucket list idea that I wanted to moon somebody. A bu bucket, list. bucket list. Bucket list item. <laughs> it had to happen. <laughs> Give them the moon in Paris. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're driving ah, beautiful. The moon. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bright today. <laughs> oh, wow! It's very white. Um, so uh, yeah, we're we're driving beautiful. I'm in the front seat, feet kicking out. It's like like you know those peaceful thoughts when you go to your happy place. That's my happy place, not the mooning part. But um, <laughs> driving France vineyards, sun glistening on you. There's this beautiful quaint French countryside town. We pull into it. I'm like, today's the day. It's happening. And so we pull around. I'm <laughs> you like decided in your heart. Yeah, today. I was like, gonna, today's the day. Gonna do it. Somebody, it's, just, it's happening now. Everyone in the van, they're all like, "Yeah, let's go, let's do this. This is hilarious." We pull in, a bunch of older gentlemen, gentle ladies at this patio set, all having their lunch. I'm all ready to go, hands unzipped, window down, <laughs> and my heart just sinks. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Oh, you chicken out? I chickened out. Until we turned the corner and there was a young man opening the door of his car for this beautiful young woman walking out of her house. <laughs> Clearly they were in love, either on a first date or maybe I like to imagine. It's France, so everybody is. Right, they're all in love just constantly. <laughs> maybe he was going to propose that day. I don't know. Probably. I don't like, you know what, this is it. This is the moment. So as we pull by, I just, everything out the window and... Um, this poor, my friends in the car explaining how her beautiful face went from pleasant and happy to t sheer terror. I like to assume that diplomacy has weakened <laughs> between France and America because of my actions. Can you top that, Blake? I'm gonna have to tap out. Uh, <laughs> I've got one more 
locked and loaded. Oh, you've got keep, another keep, one. Keep, I've got prep, man, I only prepped the one story. All right, so Albania. We're driving around. How many countries have you been to? I've been around the block. <laughs> <laughs> been around here and there. Where even is Albania? Uh, so like, that would be like Italy, and then you cross the sea, and then there's like the, the Balkan states, um, mm. and in there is Albania. Uh, we're, we're driving around, and we just finished doing a show, and all the wrong guys in the same van again. We decided that it would be a great idea to mix food in our mouth as well as some sort of liquid, open the sliding van doors next to public eating areas where crowds were gathered, have him vomit it out of his mouth in front of them, us reach out, grab him like a horde, and pull him in as he screams, help. Throw him into the van, <laughs> slam the door, peel the van out. We did this maybe four or five times around the entire city. <laughs> Just didn't, didn't ever got never got over caught, by police. Never got then, oh, like man. chunks. We're talking like man. I'm trying to think if I was sitting there, that probably freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> right. But he was like stepping out of the van, trying to get away. We're like full grabbing him, throwing him back in. I think the only way you could top that is if you have like fake blood or something. <laughs> that, machete. That's how. I got a machete. That, that's this is why there's families caught. like yours that are like, yeah. don't do the pranks because it just goes too far. <laughs> they don't stop. That's the thing right. with pranks is they, right. it, it's so easy to keep telling stories because there is no like, okay, it's done now. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, <laughs> see, I just like the, I just like the little pranks, like the little moments we're like, you, you, somebody gets scared or somebody gets surprised or right. something like that. Right. So we have this, uh, we have this mannequin head <laughs> that is on a, attached to a pole that we found in our yard. The person had left it before, after when we moved in. So I would always do weird things with this mannequin head, leave it in creepy places. But I remember even just, I would, I would, I positioned it just right so the head was like sticking over the top of the shower curtain, you know? Oh. Um, and my wife came in and, in and out of the bathroom like, I don't know, four times, and I kept, every time she would go in, I'd be like, is she going to see it? Is she going to see it? Is she going to see it? And then I wouldn't hear anything. But finally, finally, Severed she head. In. Yeah, it's like late at night. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, who did that? Who did it? <laughs> I, my concern is, why is her question not, who is that? <laughs> well, she was familiar. He, 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 he'd been around before. Oh, God, His name is Horatio. Thanks so much for enjoying episode two of Scheduled Laugh Time. Next week, Tuesday, episode three will be coming up, and we're in the works of recording our next podcast as well. Follow us on Spotify, YouTube. Hope you guys have a great one. Bye.